Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to take a look at Linux Mint 22, codename Wilma. It just released a day or so ago. Uh, I have covered the beta, but the official release um, did happen, so now we'll cover the official release. So what we'll do, and this will be a little bit different than normal. Normally I'll download the ISO, run through it, show you how to install software and whatnot. But today I got a little treat for you. I've actually been working on a script that will allow you to go in here and, and do some check boxes here. So let's say you want the Brave browser installed, Chrome, Microsoft Visual Studio Code, Discord, Microsoft Edge, GIMP, Lutris, Steam, and Proton UpQt. And then let's say you don't want Firefox or LibreOffice. You can just come in here, make those selections, check the boxes, and then hit run. And it'll automatically install, you know, the ones that you want to install and it'll automatically remove the ones that you want to remove. So without further ado, let's go ahead and switch back over to Linux Mint. We'll download the ISO and then I'll show you how to put that on a USB stick. Uh, just real quick, we've got the Cinnamon Edition, XFCE Edition, and the Mate Edition. I would say over the past three or four years, Cinnamon really has caught up to the the other two editions. I don't really see, I mean, unless you're trying to install Linux Mint on a potato, you might want to get the XFCE Edition. Um, but yeah, Cinnamon's done a really good job as far as like being lightweight and still having all the modern features whatnot but we'll, uh, we're gonna get the cinnamon edition today so download that and then I have the best luck with this sonic mirror here but you pick the mirror that works best for you what we could do is go ahead and grab etcher while we're waiting on that to download download etcher and then we want the 64-bit download And you can see I've been working on those scripts today. All right, if it's gonna finish pretty quick, I won't have to pause the video. We can go ahead and get Etcher up and working. So I just clicked on that folder, to, so it brings me to the downloads folder here. And what we can do is just right click on the zip file and hit extract here. Command exit abnormal. It exited abnormally, but let's see if it's actually going to work. So if I do a dot slash, a dot forward slash, Bellina Etcher. Oh yeah, it's still, still fired right up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here. We're going to wait for the um, ISO to finish, and then I'll show you how to put that on a USB stick. Alrighty, and our ISO did finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up our downloads folder again. And here's our ISO here. So I've still got Etcher minimized. So what I would do is flash from file, go into download, select the ISO that we downloaded, plug in your USB stick, and then you'll go to select target and you'll pick it from the list. Click flash. And it's going to ask you for your sudo password. Go ahead and put that in. And then let that complete. And you'll get a, a screen with a checkbox on it. Basically saying that the flash was successful. When you get that, leave the USB stick in your computer. Restart. Strike F12. Sometimes F11 on your keyboard. Depending on your, your motherboard. It could be F11. could be F12. Uh, but you want to get to your boot menu. And that's where I'm going to pick back up with you. We've made it to the boot menu here. I'm just going to select Start Linux Mint, the very top option. Press Enter on that one. And we'll let it boot up.
All right, we've made it into Linux Mint here. I'm just going to double click on the install. Uh, English is good. Continue. English, English, continue. I'm not going to do the multimedia codex. I don't need those. All right, erase disk. Yes. Select your time zone. And I'm just gonna go to the Linux IT guy. Super secret password. And we will let this install complete. And I'll speed this portion of the video up. All right, that install finished. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shut it down and then I will see you on that first boot. All right, we've made it on the login. Again, if you click on the cinnamon icon here, the default is the X11 session and you also have the Wayland, but it's still experimental. I'll stick with X11 for this um, video here. So we'll just log in. And one of the first things I like to do is just click on let's go, go into your desktop colors. I like to switch to dark and then I'll go with blue. If we right click and go into change desktop background and go under Wilma, there's a really cool mountain. Yeah, I like this one. All right, and one of the first things I like to do is go into the, um, what is this, the system report. And I'm just gonna ignore the multimedia and the restore point. If this is your main machine, of course, go ahead and set those up, but I'm just running this VM for demonstration purposes. Okay, and we do have some updates here. We've got bind nine, DNS lookup utility, poplar, PDF utility, a new Linux kernel, and then evolution database backend server. Okay, let's go ahead and install those. I'm still getting this crazy error message. I figured they would have fixed that by now. All right, but the updates did finish. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut the video here, give it a restart, and then I'll pick back up. All right, and we're back. Uh, one thing I messed up in the beta was I went into the software manager 
I let it cache, but I didn't restart after it cached. So I'm going to let this cache. And then when that's finished, I'm going to close out, give it a reboot, and then we'll go in and we'll see how, how much faster the software manager loads. Because it's supposed to be uh, significant. Okay, so we're in now. I'm going to give it a reboot, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so I'm fresh off of a reboot. Close out of the welcome screen. All right, so if we go into Software Manager now. Oh, yeah, much quicker. Okay, I just thought I'd give that a try. Because I know when I uh, was comparing it in the beta, I don't, I don't believe I let it cache and then restart it. I think I just let it cache and then opened it up right after that. But anyway, now that we're back in let's go ahead and open up firefox here and we're going to go out and we're going to download my um, utility that lets you select the apps that you want to install and then you can select the apps that linux mint comes with that you might not necessarily want so github.com the linux it guy and it's this linux mint scripts all right, and there's two ways you can do this. This is what it looks like. Um, what we could do is we could go to this green code button, click on that, and we could copy this get link and then open a terminal. And we want to CD change directory tilde forward slash downloads. Press enter. And that puts us into our downloads folder. So now we, if we wanted to clone this, we could do a get clone, and then we're gonna paste in this URL that we just copied. I don't think it comes with get, so I'm gonna press enter here. Yep, it doesn't come with it, so we'll do sudo, sudo apt install git. Put in your super secret password, and then let that grab git real quick. And then I'm just going to up arrow back to where we did git clone. And I'm just going to press enter on that. All right. And then if I do an ls for list directory, I'll see that we've got Linux Mint scripts. So I just want to change directory into that. And what I'm going to do this time, instead of typing out Linux Mint scripts, I'm just going to type in capital L I N and press tab. And you'll see that the terminal automatically fills that in for me. So I'm just going to press enter there and do another list. And you can see that we've got all of the files from the GitHub repository. So now I'm going to scroll down and I've created some instructions on, you know, how do you get this? What do I, you know, how do you download it? How do you install it? Etc. cetera. Um, up to this step, whoops, up to this step here you would need to follow if you were to download the release. Since we did a git clone, the steps that we're gonna do is a little bit different, but once I'm finished showing you that it does work from the git clone, I'll go back and show you how to do it with the um, release download as well. So you want to do a chmod, and instead of copying and pasting this, let me explain what each, so you want a chmod, U stands for current user that's logged in. The X stands for make executable. Dot slash stands for current directory. So basically what we're saying is we're wanting to make all the files that are inside our current directory, which is, which is downloads Linux Mint scripts. We want to make wildcard dot wildcard. So this first wildcard, that's the file name. This first wildcard, that's the file name, dot. So this remove Thunderbird dot sh. Wildcard would encapsulate all of these install and removes, right? Because it's a wildcard. And then dot sh, we've got another wildcard to capture that sh. 
And the reason why I don't do just .sh is because I've actually got a Python script that we need to make executable as well, the main.py. That's what's actually, that's the, uh, the GUI I'm about to show you. So hopefully it didn't confuse you too bad. chmod is the command that you use and then U stands for the current logged in user. You wanna make these files executable. And then the dot stands for current directory forward slash. And then the star dot stars, basically all the files that are contained within that folder. So we're just gonna press enter on that. And the graphical way we could have done this, it's a lot faster doing, doing that command, but if you wanted to come in and let's see, downloads, scripts. If you wanted to come into each one of these and right click, go to properties, permissions, and check that box, allow executing files program, you could do that as well. Essentially, that's what that did for everything in this folder. So just a nice, quick, easy way to do that. But now that that's executable, we can do uh, this directory and then we're gonna do MA. I'm gonna start typing out that main.py. I'm just gonna hit MA and then I'm gonna do tab. It'll automatically finish that for me. I'm gonna press enter. And now we have our GUI that we can, you know, install Brave. And when we check that Brave browser, the terminal lets us know that it detected that we checked the box as well. So we got Brave browser. We wanted code. Discord, GIMP, Lutra, Steam, and then we didn't want Celluloid, Firefox. I'll just remove everything just to show you that it works. So if we come down here to Super and we go under Office, you see we've got the LibreOffice stack. And then if we come under Sound and Video, we've got Celluloid, Hypnotics, and Rhythmbox. And under Internet, I think think is where Thunderbird mails at and Firefox, right? Um, but before we do that, actually, let me quit out because I told you I was going to show you how to do it. If you didn't do it, the, the Git repository, the Git clone repository, if you wanted to grab the release. So you come under releases, 1.3 is the latest and greatest. We'll grab the tar.gz. All right, and then I just click on the folder to open the downloads, right? And then if you, um, if we go back into the main instructions. So how do I use it? Download the latest um, tar GZ, that's what we just did. And then I want to go back into the downloads folder. Let's move this over a little bit. And then just to show you a quick way to get to the downloads in the terminal, you can just right click, open in terminal. And then that gets you to this downloads folder automatically. You don't have to do this step. So we're basically on step four here. So we're gonna type tar dash XZF and then start typing Linux, press tab. Uh, and then, okay, we've already got a scripts folder, so we need to do another dash. Start typing one, press tab again, and it'll fill it in, tar gz. Or you could type it all out. It's up to you. And then now <clears throat> we've got the scripts one, three folder created. So we'll do a CD, change directory into that. Press enter. And Basically, we're going to do that chmod again. So chmod user executable, this directory, star dot star, which basically means everything. We're just making it all executable. So when we go to actually open our um, GUI here, the main.py, it'll actually have um, the permissions it needs to execute, right? So if we press run again, boom. So same thing, just two different ways of doing it, right? You can do git, git clone, which is what we had over here, or you can download the release and then follow these directions to get it work, uh, up and running. But what we're gonna do now, let's go ahead and close out of some of these windows so I can kinda pull this in here. I'll probably end up zooming in here to make this easier to see. 
All right, so let's say we want the Brave Browser, Discord, Lutris, and Steam, right? And then we want to get rid of all this other stuff. I would say this is probably a gaming setup here, right? You got your browser, Discord to talk to your friends, and then Lutris and Steam. And it comes with Proton Up QT as well. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got I've got everything selected that I want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. And then it does need your sudo password. Go ahead and put that in. And it's on the brave step here. It's going out, it's pulling the necessary um, dependencies for the Brave browser. Now it's going to grab Discord. And if we had selected Google Chrome or Visual Studio Code, it would be doing those next, not Discord, right? So, all right, now it's going in and grab in Lutris because that's the next in line. And what's cool about doing, you know, check boxes is if you want to go get all your software yourself, or if you've got it on a, you know, a USB external drive or whatever on a NAS or somewhere, you can still use this utility. You can remove the apps that you're not going to use that come pre-installed with Linux Mint. So you don't necessarily have to use the install and you don't necessarily have to use the remove either. So however you want to use the utility, it's kind of up to you. You can customize it the way you'd like it. All right, now it's grabbing Steam and Proton Up QT. Removing celluloid, removing Firefox, removing hypnotic, LibreOffice. Rhythm box. Thunderbird mail. 
should be finishing here in just a second and it did so then once it's finished it says applications have been installed and or removed please click quit to exit the application so you just press ok on that and then you can hit quit here but i'm not going to do that just yet i want to click on super and make sure that it did what we asked it to do right so click on super go to internet there's brave there's discord under games there's lutris there's steam and proton up qt so that's perfect and then remove celluloid so if we go to sound and video celluloid's gone hypnotics is gone rhythm box is gone under internet thunderbird mail is gone and then office LibreOffice is gone and also under internet firefox is gone so it does look like it worked so what we'll do now is just hit quit there and that does in, in the um, the utility. So I just wanted to uh, to show you guys that. Let me go back into it real quick. And if there's an app that I need to add on this list, just leave a comment down below, and I'll see if I can put, add it to the uh, to the utility. All right, and let's take a look at the Matrix client. And this is the new modern IRC client that replaced uh, HexChat. And they're called rooms. It's basically the same thing as channels. So if we click on Linux Mint, and there's the people tab, so it shows everybody that's in that channel or room, if you want to call it that. Um, if I click on myself, here we go. I'm at the Linux IT guy colon matrix.org if you guys want to add me. All right, let's bring up a terminal here and do a Neo fetch. We're running Linux Mint 22, kernel 6.8.0-39. And my packages are not gonna be default because I've, I've already ran that utility I created that lets me go in and add different uh, software packages and then remove software packages. So we can't really get the, um, the default packages here. Uh, bash 5.2.21, cinnamon 6.2.7. All right, let's go into system info. Again, Linux Mint 22, cinnamon version 6.2.7, kernel 6.8.0-39. And I'm on my AMD 5600 with 16 gigs and my 6600. AMD GPU and of course we're on X11 still hopefully in the future that I'll be able to use Wayland all right let's check out the wallpapers try to pull it down into the corner or actually yeah I can move it to the other screen all right this one's called blanket snow mountain eclipse monument valley White Sands, CPU, Road, Body of Water, Abstract, Boat, Morocco, Ocean, Atacama, Chalette, Palm, Sunset, Colors, Blocks, Earth, Moon Phases, and England. And then this is my favorite. I'm just going to switch it back to that one. And don't forget to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see added in the install and remove categories uh, for the Linux Mint Scripts utility. But um, that's going to do it for today's video. Here are some more videos you may find helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.